Excisum euboi celatus ingens rupis in antrum, colati ducunt aditus centum, ostia centum, underunt totidem voces, responsa sibille. The Mount of Kuma is the hill that breaks at south, the low Domitian littoral's coastline. In Final Bronze Age and Iron Age as well, this area was settled by a hut village lived by natives from the pit graves culture, who were studied by a peculiar graving technique, defending the coastal settlement, crucial call for trade between natives, Opitians, Greek and Etruscans. Kuma, the most ancient and northern colony of Magna Grecia and the entire east, was founded herein by Greek settlers from the Isle of Eubea in 750-730 before Christ. Only the trading settlement of Pitecusae, Ischia, came prior to it as a fixed base for routes towards Isle of Elba and Tuscany, reach of iron, coasts of eastern Mediterranean and left ahead Heracles columns, the mouth of Gadalkivir, all places rich in minerals and trade receptive. The legend of Kuma Foundation underlines the cultural distance of homeland from the ritualty of the Foundation adventure. Settlers did use to move by the guide of a pigeon or the noise of symbols, guided by Apollon as the endless sun cycle representer. The place was opted for the naturally defended hill, the former Acropolis, fertile land good to be cultivated, populated and used for breeding animals. The port, to be identified with the bonified Licolas Lake, north from the city, and many other roadsteads and landings along the crater's coast, known as Sinus Cumanus, today's Gulf of Naples, as Miseno, Baia, Puteoli, Pizzo Falcone in Naples, Herculaneum and Capri. This situation raised prosperity of the polis, yet well exposed to winds and sun, defended by bullies still left in ample portions at the Acropolis and the lower downtown, dating at the 6th century before Christ, and not altered in perimeter since then, and as well defended by its expansion and control over the Gulf held by foundation of subcolonies, the Caiarchia Puteoli, Partenope and Neapolis. The mark of this supremacy are the victorious land and sea battles fought against Etruscans, the Apollo Sanctuary and the Acropolis Temple of Jupiter, both built in the age of Aristodemo, at the apogee of Cuma, bequeathing this way to companion populations their urbanistic and architectural systems, apart from cults, crafted goods and the alphabet itself, spread up to Rome. Caught in 421 BC by companions Enosco Samni Ethnos, Kuma stopped existing as an independent political entity and even lost any rule of maritime station. Nevertheless, are to be dated at this age urbanization of the lower town and the new defensive fabrics on the Acropolis. Among these, the so called Anthrum of Sibylla, a rampart bully walk built during some needs wars, when Kuma allied up with Rome and raised the right of voteless citizenship in 334 BC became part of Roman state. The long Rome's hegemony, to which Kuma kept herself always loyal, even adopting the language from 180 BC on, is witnessed by many monuments. 
in the Forum and on the Acropolis, Therme, Amphitheater, artificial military caves connected with the Portus Iulius on Lucrino and Avernum lakes, and the Civil Wars Mausoleum in the Necropolis, Via Domitiana, Arco Felice, suburban hills and seaside villas, including the one related to the so-called Temple of Isis. city raised maximum expansion in 2nd century AC but was found to be vital still in late ancient age period. In 6th century AC, Kuma was a battlefield of the Ostrogoth Byzantine War and narrowed down itself to the only castrum fortification on the Acropolis, with which at last was identified, most of all after the defensive raising decided by Naples in 1207 for being found as a dangerous cove of pirates and thieves. On the other western wall of the Dromos corridor, named Antro della Sibilla by Medeo Maiore, we can see a group of vertical signs that catched my attention since 1972. Signs are 10 cm average long. This group, that can be easily named Calendar A, consists of 29 notches. One first row of 20 parallel notches, lined in a unique horizontal line, is followed by a second underlying row of nine parallel notches aligned to the right. This kind of placement makes us suppose that the upper row has been drawn from left to right, while the lower row has been drawn from right to left according to the bosophytical system. In the summer of 95, I went there with Raffaele Iacente, a friend of mine, to take drawings and pictures. At the end of the survey, on a walk through the Dromos, Raffaele, proving an outstanding spirit of observation, spotted a further group of 13 notches. It was drawn in one of the side corridors leading outside, towards the sea and presently on the northern wall, but placed at an uncommon height above the ground. On the right side of the notches, it's possible to see a schematic spindle-shaped drawing. The wall complex can be called Calendar C. The first and most intuitive way of organizing time for the primordial man have always been the day, seen as the sequence of light and darkness. Later on, in an intermediate moment of Paleolithic, human sight spotted and recognized the natural great clock and calendar, the moon. Man observed moon's phases, rising moon, full moon, static moon, after that, the night light was disappearing for about three days, to start back over the same mystic cycle. It took little more than 29 days for the old cycle to complete. The idea of month came to life, and it dealt both with functionality and with magic. It's been almost automatic at that point to identify, in this lapse of time, the same lapse of women's period. This soon led to the acknowledgement of an intimate mystical functional relationship between moon and woman. Further reasoning made us understand that, after about 12 lunar cycles, season appeared recursive, 
even with some delay. Seasons at that time were identified in cold season and warm season, or at most rainy season and dry season. Actually, synodic months, based upon lunar cycle, takes 29.53 days, while 12 lunar calendar cycles takes 354.37 days to complete, but our ancestor used it to calculate months on a 29 full days basis, reaching a total of 348 days instead of today's 365 we are used to consider. The concept of year came to life in a primordial shape. During Neolithic, agriculture spread out, especially cereals farming, requiring a more precise calendar to exactly calculate sowing and harvest periods. Those extra 17 days soon became a problem, mostly because they were some at each other year after year, forcing the surge in a continuous rearrangement of both virtual and sacred calendars, according to farming needs. So, some ancient observers started to calculate lunar cycles using a different system. Moon's position was then compared to some stars. This guesstimate led to a 28 days lapse average, even closer to women's cycle. Nowadays we have calculated the sidereal month, known as revolution time, in 27 days, 7 hours, 11.5 seconds, and we also know that 13 moon cycles take a bit more than 355 days, even if on those time they were used to get tough. Somebody approximated the lapse of time to 28 days and calculated that a 13 month year did last 364 days, definitely not bad for a 6000 years ago astronomer. Many groups of notches, similar to calendar A and C, have been existing since prehistory. Among these are to be noticed the ivory pendulous, engraved with lines and notches, and the large breasted, large homed Venus of La Selle, also known as the goddess with the horn. The pendulous features 14 notches, clearly engraved on the convex side, while the Venus of La Selle holds a horn with 13 similar notches. Another two bass reliefs with similar features came from the same age and same time. It must be noticed, in fact, that since from early 70s Alexander Marshak kept believing that since from the late Paleolithic there was a way to calculate time on a moon cycle basis. Moon cycle was analyzed, memorized and used for practical purposes about 15,000 years before agriculture discovery. Therefore, it can be better understood the great importance of the moon in archaic mythologies and above all the integration in an only system on the part of moon symbolism of realities different among them as women, waters, vegetation, snake, fertility, death, rebirth. The snake itself is a symbol, almost an epiphany, of the moon both for appearing and disappearing, and because, according to a legend reported by Aristotle and Pliny, it is supposed to have as much rings as the lunar month, and above all because its frequent change of skins was seen as a sign of immortality. 
This also turned the snake into a symbol of constant regeneration, as the moon was cyclically appearing and disappearing. We are particularly interested in the link between the moon and the snake. It is not by chance that in archaic myths the snake, in shape of a dragon, holds the sacred source of immortality. That means the knowledge of pre-science and subsequently the art of seeking the will of gods, in the present and in the future. The snake indeed holds the tree of life, tree of good and evil, source of youth and the oracle of Delphi. Furthermore, the dragon, keeping the oracle of Earth Goddess, was a female dragon, Dragaina. From now on, we can suppose a variety of correlation among Moon and its calendars, spread next to the place where Sibylla used it to forecast. The water-related aspect is first of all given by the displacement of calendars, exactly towards the sea, being this one itself linked so evidently with moon, flood, tide is an example. There could be a deeper link between water, forecast, Sibylla and the moon, the snake. It is sacred to Apollo, the god of Kuma and the god of forecast during classic age. It should be of a certain ease to find some worship object in the surroundings of the Dromos. We now have two couples of value. Number 29, stating the synodic month, linked to the number 12, indicating months of a corresponding year. Furthermore, the 28 days of several months are correlated with the 13 months needed to complete a year. At this point, it's obvious to relate the first Kuma's group of notches to the meaning of lunar synodic months of 29 days and the group spotted by my young friend to the meaning of sidereal months based the year, 28 days per 13 months. According to this approach, the pen loss could represent two moon phases, 14 days, and the horn in the Venus of La Salle could represent a 13 months year. We should also notice that the muscle is on the reverse of the most of the human coins. This makes possible some correlation with the oracle of Ephira in Epirus. There, at the bottom of the so-called Hades, Professor Sotiris Dakaris found hundreds of shellfishes with burial traces, animal bones, large broad beans and piles of ashes that all lead to the clue of an oracle based upon the incubatio. This could not be worth of note if a circumstance is highlighted. The petitioner, admitted to the necromantean, had to leave sunlight for 29 days. Also the Mesopotamic death ritual, as described by Lucianus in Menippus, took 29 days as well, starting from a new moon. This brings us back to the 29 notches calendar. <laughs>